Woman to Woman today. I'm your host, Jen Maceda, and we have an exciting show planned for you. Today, we are at Veterinary Dental Services in Boxborough, Massachusetts, with the amazing Dr. Bonnie Shope, the owner and lead veterinarian here, and she is going to be showing us how to clean your pet's teeth, but also telling us about her journey to becoming a veterinarian and a business owner of her own. So... Welcome to the show, Bonnie. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us a bit about your journey to becoming a veterinarian, um, and then we'll go into the business because it's such a great story of women supporting women. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I uh, decided that I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was in college, um, but it was interesting because I was told by a mentor in college that I would never get into vet school, so I shouldn't bother applying. Oh, that's an interesting mm -hmm. mentor. <laughs> I know. So, so then you thought, you know what? Sometimes you need that that negative reinforcement, and then you say, "What the heck? Of course I can do this." Well, I, you know, I left his office feeling very dejected, and I thought, "All right, I have to figure out what my next path is." And I graduated from college, and I recognized that there was nothing else in the world that I wanted to do but be a veterinarian. And uh, it took going and working in a vet practice as a volunteer for me to realize within three months of graduating that I needed to figure out how to do it. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And so you did. I did. I went back to school after college and took some more courses that I needed to take. And uh, two years later was accepted to vet school. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, that's good for you, but it's also good for all of us and all the animals that you see. So tell us about your practice and how that came to be. Veterinary Dental Services was first established in 1999 by a mentor of mine, Laura, Dr. Laura Levan, and uh, it started as a mobile practice. She went into different veterinary hospitals in the region, and she um, eventually established Veterinary Dental Services in Acton, and then in and I worked with her for about ten years, and then in 1999 I was able to buy the practice when she retired and we have grown the business ever since and a year ago we built this facility here and um, have grown the business we now are in a 5300 square foot practice with a lot more room to see patients and treat our patients it's a beautiful facility it's so modern and so clean and so welcoming for animals. I mean, from, from the steps that you have that are leading up to the lab tables, mm -hmm. um, to, the, to the toys, to this comfort space that we're in right now mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you know, pet owners to, mm -hmm. to come and relax. Um, while, uh, you know, it's, it's part, an animal is so part of your family, you need a space that is welcoming <clears throat> and calming and, and has that sense of support while you're while your pet is going through potentially some yeah uh, some surgeries that are are yeah you know, I mean pretty it, significant that was that was really important to me when I was designing this space to include to really be considerate of our clients that are the ones bringing their pets here um, making them feel welcome creating a space for them to stay during the day if they wanted to while their pet was having surgery a lot of our clients travel from long distances or they just don't want to leave the building they want to be here it's beautiful and. And that's what, yeah. you know, that this space here, this room has really allowed us to offer that to our clients. Yeah, it's, it's a great experience room and a, and a beautiful facility, as I said. Um, now, let's just go back for a minute because when we spoke, you felt really passionate about um, having the support of that mentor, uh, the original owner of um, the Veterinary Dental um, Association. So this is, this is really a mentorship opportunity um, for you to give back just as um, the original owner gave to you. Yeah, I mean, that has been a very exciting part of my, uh, the development of my career over the years is um, certainly I spent several years learning to become an expert in dentistry and I had many mentors, but Laura was one that, um, you know, ta taught me a lot, not just about dentistry, but also about managing a business, working with people, and how to treat treat customers. So that's been, you know, she was wonderful. And now here at Veterinary Dental Services, we have a residency program, which is a program to train 
the future veterinary dentists. We don't have very many veterinary dentists in, in the world. There's about 150. You're kidding. No, it's a really tiny uh, specialty. That is so small. Mm -hmm. and, and of that, what percentage would you say are females? Oh, my gosh. I wish I knew that, that answer to that question, but I would, I would like to say it could be 50-50. The veterinary industry is, is graduating predominantly women right now. Um, I don't want to get quoted on this number, no, but no, no, at maybe 80% right. women it's, right now. It's what you see. And um, but, but historically speaking, it was a predominantly um, male-driven yeah. industry. So more and more women are getting into the industry. And so here at Veterinary Dental Services, we have trained one resident. Dr. Carl finished her residency and is a, is a specialist now. And we have Dr. Feigen working here as well. She's in the second year of her residency. Um, so it's been uh, very interesting and inspiring for me to go and train, you know, the, the future. So That's great. Thank mm -hmm. you for doing that. Mm -hmm. We took a, a tour of the facility um, so, so with uh, one of your close friends, your dog, Annie. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. Your fur baby. Who we have here. Yes, we do. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to, to chatting with her. Um, Yes, and, and through the facility, you had mostly females working here. So not just the residents that are coming through, but also your staff. Tell us about how Yeah, um, so we have 15 employees. So in total, there are four doctors here. Three of us are women. And we have uh, the rest of our employees. So we, we have two men who work here and, and 13 women. So it's, it's, it is a female-dominated practice. Um, one of the surprises to me when I bought the business and, and took on a new role, a new, a new role, a new leadership role, really, of being a business owner, was this surprise that I was employing people. It hadn't really occurred to me that I, maybe it should have, but um, I feel really good about the fact that I am employing people, and our business has grown since 1999. When I bought the business, we had three employees. That's incredible. Wow, yeah. that is yeah. amazing growth. So in seven growth. years, we, we've had sure. that kind of growth. That's and, fantastic. And, um, yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. Uh, so we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we are going to learn how to brush your fur baby's teeth using a beautiful model, Annie. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back to Woman to Woman today. We are here with Dr. Bonnie Shope from Veterinary Dental Services in Boxborough, Mass, and we have a special guest. You want to tell us who this beautiful creature is? This is Annie. She is a five-year-old Portuguese water dog. She's my family's dog, and she loves to have her teeth brushed, so I thought she would be a great model for us to teach tooth brushing for those who might be interested. So who should be interested in this, essentially? And how, how often should we try this? Tooth brushing is something that I would recommend that any dog or cat owner uh, do on a daily basis. Really, you need to brush regularly every day for it to be effective. The less frequently you brush, obviously, the less effective it is. Right. So the more mm -hmm. buildup of plaque. plaque and, okay. Mm -hmm. and so tooth brushing removes plaque. Okay. That's it. And how often, because this is great as a preventative measure, but how often should they get seriously checked and cleaned by a professional like, um, like you and your colleagues? Yeah, I would recommend once a year. Okay, once a year. Mm -hmm. So it, th this is something that you mentioned, and, and uh, you know, we were talking before. It has to be something that they enjoy. Right. The flavor and the texture of. Yeah. Okay. So you want to go slowly when you're teaching your dog to accept tooth brushing. As you can see, Annie really likes the flavor of the toothpaste. There are several flavors on the market, so you might want to experiment until you find one you think your dog will like. And initially, when you're first teaching your dog to accept tooth brushing, just let them lick the toothpaste either off your finger or off the toothbrush. And maybe that's all you do. And then you're done. You do that every day at the same time of day. And you can see I'm petting her. You can, um, you know, sweet talk your dog. Good girl, Annie. Yeah. And, you know, you use words that reaffirm or affirm what you're doing. And then um, as you get 
as your pet gets more used to having their teeth brushed, then you can actually start lifting the lip. And you can see I'm just going in a back and forth motion. And I'm lifting her lip away a little bit. And she's doing some chewing, which mm -hmm. is normal. You can see how clean her yeah. beautiful teeth are. They are beautiful. And the bristles on this brush? They're very soft. Okay, soft bristle, bristle brush. Yep. And then I often will reload toothpaste as I go. <laughs> this is edible. Anna, you're not going to need lunch later, Anna. <laughs> you are all set, my friend. So now I'm, and I'm really concentrating on just the sides of her teeth right now. So you she, can see she's letting me she's do this. She's doing great. And yeah. this is because you do it daily. Yeah, we do it every day. And because it tastes good. Yeah. So here I'm getting in the way back of her mouth. And as she chews, it helps to expose those lower teeth in the back. Yeah. And I like opening my mouth like... <laughs> like That's you what want I do some? to the kids, too. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. This is a lot like... like I have to model yeah. the behavior. <laughs> so now we're going to do the insides. Oh, okay. And this is a little bit harder. Are you getting her, her gum as well? Is there yes. any benefit to, to well, this? Well, the plaque hides under the gum at, oh. the, at the tooth. Right. So you do want to be brushing the crown of the tooth and the gum of the tooth. Okay. See, she still wants more. Yep. She's asking for more. And now this is even harder to try to brush the inside of the yeah. lowers because, you know, they kind of think you're gagging them. Right. So I like to give her frequent breaks and just That's a good idea. we kind of settle in, we reconnect. She, you know, recognizes that I'm not being too pushy. <laughs> and uh, I can't imagine and if, that you would be pushy anyway. Well, if your dog does start to back up, stop. Yeah, you right. know, Don't force it. If, right. they, if they're really uncomfortable, right. maybe that's done when you're training in the beginning. Okay, that and, makes sense. Because you want the experience to be a positive one, so you can do that again. That makes sense. What yep. about their tongue? Yeah, so this is the way I try and get the bottom teeth in okay. the front. Yeah. I'll actually gently put my finger uh, yeah. and, and hold the over mouth the open over yeah. the tongue. And she knows I'm not hurting her, but she wants to get her tongue on right. that toothbrush. So yeah. it is a little bit of a fight back and forth between us. But I, I mean, just like a human brushes their tongue, should oh. you do that for an animal too? No. Okay. They, that, not you're necessary. not going <laughs> to. I don't think it's necessary, but um, they won't allow it either. Okay. They just won't tolerate it. Yeah. So. Well, you're sort of getting it as she's licking mm -hmm. the brush itself. So yeah. That's, that's handy. I mean, if, if your dog she let you, that would be that. great. I, I just don't <laughs> know that it would be possible. No. Should we try? Oh. <laughs> Good job, Annie. Thank you for modeling that behavior for us. Yeah. Thank you, Bonnie. That is Very really helpful. Welcome. So every day, something that they enjoy and go slowly and yes. take breaks. Breaks. Perfect. Don't push it. Don't expect to become an expert in the first week. Okay. It can take months in some animals to get really good at it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's helpful. So we hope you enjoyed this episode of fur babies getting their teeth brushed. It's so critical for prevention of any disease, any periodontal disease within your beautiful animals. So thanks for watching everybody and be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram so that you can follow and like and we're also on YouTube. We hope to inspire you next time. Bye.